One of D.L. Moody's earliest ministries was to children. He used a wide range of methods to draw the children of Chicago off the streets or to leave their homes for a few hours to hear the good news of the gospel. D.L. Moody had only a sixth grade education, yet God used him in this endeavor and many more. Today we will look at a man and a ministry who are a result, who are a result of D.L. Moody and his example. Welcome to the God's Peculiar People podcast, where we learn about the lives and characteristics of God's people. It's possible that you've heard about Child Evangelism Fellowship. Growing up, I never personally attended a good news club, but I enjoyed looking at the materials that my mom had kept from when her family had been part of CEF as she was growing up. One of the things I always enjoyed was looking at the pictures in the CEF storyboard book about TFAM, a girl from Haiti. She wanted a dress with words on it. It's a very good story. And if I remember correctly, it's still available for purchase in the CEF material store. It's a great way to teach kids at church or at a club about missions. But how did CEF, Child Evangelism Fellowship, how did it get started? To tell that story, we have to learn a little bit about Jesse Irvin Overholzer. I'm going to refer to him as Jesse just because I know it'll be hard to say Overholzer uh, many times in this episode. So, Jesse was born on July 20th, 1877. He grew up attending a Brethren church. At the age of 12, he expressed interest in personally responding to the gospel, but he was told, and I believe if I've read correctly by his mother even, that he was too young. Can you imagine telling a four or five year old, much less someone who is 12 years of age, that they are too young to understand the gospel and to put their trust in Christ? That is so very sad. Well, for a time, Jesse would live the life of a prodigal, but like the prodigal, he returned home to his father's house. Jesse's father welcomed him back and sent him to college. Originally, Jesse had planned to study law, but during an evangelistic meeting at the school, Jesse's excuses for rejecting Christ were taken away. When an invitation was given, he was one of the first to respond. His focus then turned from law to missions. Jesse graduated and began to pastor a church. But his ministry began to suffer. It was then that he read a book about D.L. Moody and wondered, how was this imperfect man, one with only a sixth grade education, used so powerfully by God? How was he so successful? Jesse stated, I saw that Moody had something which I did not have, the Holy Spirit's presence and blessing his life and ministry. Things began to change in Jesse's life. He then read a quote of Spurgeon's, in which Spurgeon stated his belief that children, even as young as five, could come to faith in Christ. Because of the experience he'd had at twelve, this surprised Jesse. But in time, he came to believe it was true. Well, the Lord began to give Jesse an idea and he traveled to Chicago to seek the help of the Moody Bible Institute to found a new ministry. This is when Child Evangelism Fellowship was founded in 1937 with Jesse Overholzer and the Moody Bible Institute. Since its inception in 1937, CEF has established programs in all of the United States in 192 countries. They have some 733 full-time workers and an estimated 40,000 volunteers across the United States and Canada, over 1,200 missionaries overseas, approximately 1,000 of them being national workers. In 2014, CEF reported teaching more than 19.9 million children, mostly through face-to-face ministries like Good News Clubs, Five Days Clubs, etc. So why am I talking about CEF? Well, a couple reasons. One, CEF Good News Clubs are where my mother realized her need of a savior and accepted Christ. Uh, I won't tell the whole story in case I get to have her on at some point to to tell it herself, but that's one of the reasons why CEF has been always very interesting to my family and I. We've kind of kept track of what's been happening throughout the years. Well, in 2011, 2018, I was just finishing up or yeah, I was in my final year of Bible school and I had the opportunity to teach at a good news club. This was not in a school, which is traditionally how a CEF works as they go into a school, but this was through a YMCA. Now, I will admit there are things about the ministry I do not 100% agree with, but the ministry is a way to get into schools, to boys and girls clubs, etc., to share the gospel. And so as a road to get in, 
and have that backing of an organization umbrella is a good way to do it. Um, I, I don't know of many other organizations, Christian organizations that do this. I believe if I remember correctly, Rock of Ages Prison Ministry has a way to get in as well. They have a children's program. Uh, if I can find more information about that, I will do an episode about that in the future. But good news clubs here in Florida, where I live, are kind of the only way you can get into a school and share the gospel. So this is something that anyone can do. You can volunteer to help in a local good news club. But if possible, I recommend having your church adopt a school and having only people from your church run the club. CEF is non-denominational. And if you were the head of the club in the school, you were able to stay within the CEF guidelines, but all of your workers should be able to be on the same page as to how you would present the gospel, what version of the Bible you would use, things of that nature. It's easier to coordinate who's doing what, when, and where, rather than having maybe you in a club and then people from many different churches coming to help, if that's possible. If you're a small church and you can't, you can work with that as well. But if possible, being able to do that is very, very useful. It just makes things a little bit easier. Because CEF will work with any church. If you are a Baptist, you may not want to work with the Seventh-day Adventists to teach a class. This will probably, in time, cause confusion among the students if emphasis is placed on what day to worship, how to get saved, etc. If you can, save yourself the headache. Get enough people to volunteer to man a club from your church. Now, I'm going to read a, a part from the CEF website answering the question, can we really teach the Bible in public schools? Is this really something we can go and do? And the answer is yes. The gospel has been taught freely in public schools all over the world for some time. Now, children in the U.S. have that opportunity too. Back in 2001, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled in Good News Clubs versus Milford Central School that Good News Clubs can meet in public schools in the United States after school hours on the same terms as other community groups. Children attend Good News Clubs only with their parents' permission. When I first started teaching Good News Clubs in 2011, that wasn't something I had to worry about because I was working within a YMCA after-school care center. And initially, we were allowed to teach all of the kids at the YMCA. But, you know, over time, as the leadership at that particular YMCA changed, the rules changed on who we could teach. And finally, in the last year we were there, they asked us to get parental permission for each child to attend the club, which was sad. It was fine, but it was sad. And it was slightly confusing. Uh, at the time we were there, it was slightly confusing. And we almost lost the, the club several times because of people who did not want the Good News Club to be there, which is really sad when you think about it. Because, you know, YMCA, they just kind of refer to themselves now as the Y, but the YMCA stands for Young Men's Christian Association, which D.L. Moody worked in the YMCA's Young Men Christians Associations. But sadly, they did not want a Bible club to be allowed to teach kids at that location. It was very sad. There, there were so many amazing kids we got to work with over the years we were there. Often there was a quick turnover of the children as some went to after school care, some moved, but some of the kids we first started teaching were still there in 2018 when we left. It was fun to watch them grow and to get to see them go from never hearing a Bible story to some of them finally asking questions and eager and excited to see us there, to remembering the songs and being able to memorize and tell us verses. It was a lot of fun. Now, it's important to remember that anyone at any age can put their trust in Jesus Christ. Young kids at a YMCA, an older person, a person in prison, anyone at any age. There's nothing that someone has done that would keep them from trusting in Christ. Anyone can believe. And when we work with children, it's important to not force them or scare them into making a profession, but to clearly share the good news that Jesus died for them. Over the years, I've heard of churches and organizations that, while some are probably well-meaning, use language and tactics to rack up numbers of professions, rather than making clear to children the importance of the decision the importance of putting their trust in Christ. And this goes for elementary age students all the way up through teens. Some of the things that are done at teen camps, teen uh, meetings, just the language and tactics, I think, are, are meant to, to scare and then put a false trust in those kids' hearts when they actually haven't made a decision. 
Especially today, with all the kids are taught, it can be hard to keep their attention, and even harder to get them to focus on what we are saying at a club, a VBS, Sunday school. But it's not our job to make them make a decision. Our job is to plant the seed, then to live a life that they see is different than that of people around them, to live with hope, faith, and joy. 1 Peter 3.15 says, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you, with meekness and fear. Be ready, whether that is to answer a co-worker or a child, perhaps your child, with the good news of Jesus Christ. So if your church is looking for a ministry, a way to reach people in your community, to reach children in your, in your community, uh, perhaps you don't have the ability to do a bus ministry because that is a little different these days. It's, it's a little bit harder in many areas to do something like that. But a good news club is a very good way to reach kids with the gospel. Maybe they'll come to your church. Maybe they won't. But it is a way and a ministry to reach kids in your community, your area, with the gospel. So I encourage you to look into that, especially over the summer. It's a good time if you're wanting to start up a good news club, maybe in the fall. This would be a great time to start talking with the local CEF chapter, asking them, hey, what can I do? What do I need to do? What does our uh, school, what does our church have to have? Numbers wise, material wise, what do we need to have in order to do a good news club? Highly recommend you to check out the website, CEF. I'll put a link to the main website in the description down below so you can go and check that out. But that is all for today. Thank you for listening to the God's Peculiar People podcast. I will talk to you again next week.